Can you hear me? If so, give, just give me a number one in the comments. If you can't, I have put a thing up there saying hi all. Please let me know if you can. If the sound is okay. If you can't hear me. If you can't hear me. Oh, well. Because I don't want to spend 20 minutes talking and then someone comes up and says, Oh, I can't hear anything. And then I have to edit it out at the end. Or struggle getting my mic to work again. But I haven't touched it since I sorted it last night. So hopefully it should be working. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Right. I know my sound is working. Well, it was yesterday. I took, because my grandkids were coming over, I moved my laptop and my mic out of the way. And um, the buttons must have got knocked on my mic and I hadn't realised. Until like 20 minutes into the live. But then I noticed at the end of the live, which no one told me, there was an echo. So I didn't, I didn't put it up on YouTube. Like normally I download it and then upload it onto YouTube for people to watch on replay. I didn't do it. I'm not having that go out like that. So. How's everyone tonight? I've had a very quiet day. Found my son up this morning about my washing machine because he was supposed to fix the leg on me, the little twisty leg thing at the bottom, right? the balance thing or whatever, and then pushed the washing machine back in for me. Well, he didn't. So last night, I, man I pulled the washing machine out with a struggle 
tipped it a little bit and got the foot back underneath and in place. But I couldn't get the washing machine back in into the space where it goes. So I phoned him up this morning and he said, I can come over Thursday. I went, what? What? I can't use my washing machine. Yes, she can. I said, no, I can't because I can't get into the cupboard to get my washing liquid. I went, okay, I'll be over to my I went, thank you. So, Simon, if you're listening, don't forget, come over tomorrow. Because he come out, then he come over, he said, did you know I was in your, listening to your uh, live broadcast the other night? I went, I don't know who's listening. Unless you come into chat and say hi, I don't know who's there. I said, so no, I wouldn't know if you was here or not. He said, I said, why didn't you just say hi in chat? He said, I was working. I can't type on my phone. I went, okay, so you're sitting in the bushes. But it's nice to know he was listening to me. This is the only time he does listen to me. Anyway, tonight, we're looking at Katie. Katie Crowfoot, her, herself, her family, what she joined like career-wise, as much as I could find out, because, again, I hit roadblocks, because I type something in, and it'll say, uh, oh, nah, like, just block me from getting that information, because I'm not in the USA. Mm. So I tend to go on Facebook, this one Facebook page a lot, because I get a lot of information off that. Like tonight, I've just come across a piece of information about the mother. So I did ask if anyone knew anything about the father, but no one's got back to me. No one's got back to me about the father. But I could have sworn earlier on in the case, he, he said something. He put a statement out about his daughter is a loving mother or something like that. And I'm thinking, was that her father? Or was that just an actor making out it her father? So she's brought, paid into saying all those things about her. Anyway, be nice. Let's be nice to Katie tonight, shall we? I'll try. Anyway, let's have a look. Uh, as we know, first of all, I'm just going to touch on the um, Amber Alert thing. Because he was on the 26th when he was reported missing. He was down as an endangered child. Right? Endangered alert. But then on the 27th, he was put, it was altered to an amber alert. Now it says, an amber alert is issued when there is reasonable belief by law enforcement that an, that an abduction has occurred or and the child is, is in imminent danger of serious injury. Or death, according to DOJ. Right? Now, Seth has said the medication he was on isn't life-threatening. But then I've heard other people say it is life-threatening. So, I don't know. But, anyway, that's why he was put up to an umbrella. Because of his medication... The fact that he's autistic, right? And that is when law enforcement... I know it's only being a day, right? But on that first day, they gave at the interview, they're doing interviews and all this stuff, like, right, talking to the press. Then after, like... Once it went up to an Amber Alert, it was like, 
cook ten fifteen cough. Don't say anything to anyone. And we wasn't told a thing. Not a thing. Right? So I said then because I said then that because law enforcement and TBI are not talking, you will have people come up with their own conclusions. Right? As to what happened, how it happened. But it's nothing uh, conclusive. We don't know what happened. All we know is that on Sunday, he got up, had breakfast. Fun fact by his mother that she done breakfast. That's a fun fact. Hmm. Don't see what's so fun about doing breakfast, but... Anyway, she then... Says uh, they went and picked up his niece and met up with his two aunts. She did go uh, some, she must have done some grocery shopping because she said she picked up some snacks because he's a 15 year old lad, they like their snacks. So she must have done some of that first and then then gone to BJ's, which I find would be appropriate because it was like round about lunch time by then. So they've probably gone and had something to eat right for lunch. Then after there, they went bowling. Now, I, I'm sure she said in the very first interview that they then come home after the bowling. They came back home because she put the groceries away. And then went back out again for their dinner, which was at the Sky Cafe. So, but all in all, as soon as I heard all that, I thought, oh, darn, this is an autistic child. That's sensory overload. Ooh, is she going to pay for that later? Right? So, now they come home, Sebastian. Put the trash out because that's his chore. And then he was playing in the room. And then come nine o'clock, she said, it's time for bed. He went to bed. He went, okay, love you, mum. Love you to the puppies. And went to bed. And she gave a little bit of a laugh. Like, I'm thinking, is he not normally like that then? Does he normally put up a bit of a fight to go to bed? Uh -huh. And um, I think something happened. I don't think it happened. At, I think at nine o'clock she had and she'd been having an argument with him to get him to go to bed. Right between nine and say ten. Right, she'd been having an ongoing argument with him to get him to settle down and go to bed. And then at 10 o'clock, she's probably gone into him, so gave him his final warning, and something's happened. Now, this is just my opinion. Please put your opinions in the chat if you've got one. And um, I think something happened where he's bumped his head, but not to the point where it's knocked him out. Right? Because of that thud. She said she heard a thud. No, you don't hear a thud. Well, you do hear it, but that's a word you use when you see something happening. Like, it crashed, it came crashing down, like, no, not crashing down, sorry. It hit the ground with such a thud sort of thing. So I think she was in the room when he hit his head. And then I think, I believe he's gone to bed, gone to sleep, and passed. Because in the interview, she said, I went in and woke him up, and he was gone. If she just said, I went in to wake him up, and he was gone, I'd be thinking, okay. But she didn't. She said, I went in and woke him up. 
How would why would you wake a child up if he wasn't in his bed? So I think he passed. Now, if that was the case, why didn't she just report to the police? You know what I mean? So I don't understand this whole case. I feel bad for Seth. I feel heartbroken for him because people are now turning against him and saying how uh, Sebastian shouldn't even go to his dad. Why? Why should he not be allowed to go to his dad if they find him alive? His dad isn't the one using the belt on him. His dad isn't the one letting older children come in and play with him and abuse him. His dad isn't the one who's having uh, friends over who are pedos. Why? His dad will let him go online and play online, but his dad is there watching him and he plays on his dad dad's account. His dad even said he'd open up an account for him and he said, no, I like playing on yours. So he's quite happy to play on his dad's account on the Xbox or wherever it was he was playing. So, and his friends... We'll phone him up and say, oh, I'll message him and say, do you know your son is on your account? Logged into your account. And he'd go, yeah, I'm sitting here watching him. You know what I mean? So it wasn't as if he was just letting him go on there then going about the house and doing something outside or whatever. He was watching him. So anyway, as I said, we're here to talk about Katie. So I tried to find some information on her family because we haven't heard much about her family. And I came, as I said, I was trying to get some information on her and this woman had already posted it once in this group, but she got it back up again. I'm going to share it with you. Right. Now, this is filed back in 2004. Right. Defendant Payne, Penny Irene. Right. Charge unlawful wounding. The rest, the second of the tenth, two thousand and four. Right. Then it's got down here. Sixth, seventh, two thousand and four. Thirty grand jury. Seventh of the twenty sixth, two thousand and four. A plea tried. 9-21-2004, pre-sentence report. And then it's got result, sentence. 2005, motion, all that post-trial. Granted. But, it's... Disposition. I. Right. I'll see if I can get in a bit more so you can see. No, it's not going to let me go any further. Hi. Okay. Right. Penitentiary. Uh, sentence time five years, not months, not zero days. Sentence suspended. Four years. Right? Then he's got the costs, $805. Probation type. Indefinite supervision. 99 years on probation. 
99 years probation for unlawful wounding. I've heard of cases in the USA of unlawful wounding. And then I've never heard of not never heard them getting ninety nine years probation. But then over here we've got people who come out of prison and they're on what we call life probation. It's just the same as ninety nine years. Right. So I thought, wow. Because we're sort of thinking, what did she do to get ninety nine years? Hi, Gigi. What on earth did she do? We're all thinking. <laughs> and then it come out that it's unlawful wounding. I'm thinking, I'm sure I've seen cases where people have been up for unlawful wounding before and never got 99 years probation. Christ. But wouldn't that mean, like, if she's on probation, she can't go out of a certain... Out of a, Cross states, going to another state without getting permission, and things like that. I know here you you can't, you can't, you can't go out, you can't go flying, not while you're on probation, and uh, so you can't leave the country. Right, but there's nothing saying like. Where I live, I can't go to Perth, right? Which is about, what, an hour and a half away? An hour by car, maybe, right? Probably less. But there's nothing saying I can't go to Perth. But I wouldn't be able to go to cross borders, go over the border into England. And same as in if you're in the U England, you can't cross borders and come up to Scotland if you're on probation. To be honest, we don't want the English up here. They've got one of us already up here, they don't need any more. <laughs> uh, they can, depending, depends, supervised or not, can get permission to leave state or country. All right. Okay, thank you for that. See, I don't know the rulings over there, but I know here you can't go down to, like, cross the border into England or from England into Scotland. I suppose if they say it was a family matter, you could probably get permission to do that. But if your backside is not back up here, say, say they gave you three or four days to do what you had to do. If your backside wasn't back up here in three or four days, they gave you a, a warrant out for your arrest. So, it's like the laws up in Scotland are totally different to down in England. We was telling our friends, like, if you come up to Scotland and you're driving, do not even have one alcoholic drink. Because in the UK, in England, they are allowed, I think, one alcoholic drink and drive still. But in Scotland, zero, zero tolerance to drinking and driving. And let's go and wise and said, because if you come over the border into Scotland and you get pulled over, and they smell alcohol on you, it'd be just one drink, you're going to get jumped on. They're going to have you because it's zero tolerance, which I believe in. If you're going to go for a drink, leave your car at home. Simple. Get a taxi, get a... What is it you have over there? They have it over here in England, in the UK, in England. Uh, what's the name? You have to have an account for it. And pay for it before you actually get it. I can't remember. So, um, but if I if like, 
I don't drive. I haven't got the patience to drive. I'd have put, if I'd have, <laughs> if I'd have been a driver, I'd have been locked up years ago for road rage. My husband hated, hated going in the car with me because I'd be the passenger and we'd be stuck at traffic lights and there'd be some stupid D-head, three cars in front of us, not moving as the lights changed. And I'm thinking, if he don't go next time the lights go to green, I'm going to go down to his car and actually show him what to do. Even though I don't drive, I know how to move a car. And my husband's going, Angela, do not unbuckle your seatbelt and do not open that door. Mm. Honest to God, I just get so mad. So, I thought, I'm not going to learn to drive. I'm not. I haven't got the patience for drivers. I haven't got the patience as a pedestrian with the drivers. Because they don't indicate. You think you're going to go straight ahead. Right? So, you're waiting. Because they've not indicated to go right, you think they're going uh, to go left or whatever. So you're waiting because you think, well, they're not indicating, so they're going to come straight ahead, so I can't cross the road yet. Then all of a sudden they go left or they go right. I'm thinking, really? I could have crossed a flipping road, you little. And my grandkids, I have to be careful when I've got my grandkids around me, especially my granddaughter. Oh, yeah. The other, night, the other week my son was here. And he's waiting on a food order. <laughs> he stood in my door of my living room and he said something like, something would do, and it involved the word S-H-I-T in it. Right? And my granddaughter turned around and said, little shit. And I turned around to her and I said, pardon? What did you just say? <laughs> and she repeats what you're saying now. So, we have to be careful what we say around my little granddaughter. Because she's got a potty mouth like a granny. But she's also picking up the brummy accent. Because I'm from Birmingham down in England. I've got the brummy accent. My son has got the brummy accent. My daughter, she's got the Brummy accent, but she uses a lot of the Glaswegian terms. So she talks a lot more Glaswegian than anything else. But it's so cute when my granddaughter comes, and it's a mix because she's talking like, Dund like Dundonian. With their words, and then every so often she throws in, throws in a brummy word. She'll say something just like a brummy so from someone from Birmingham would say. And it's so confused. Just so confusing to hear her talk. Anyway, let's get back on. As you can see, she got life probation for doing. Unlawful. So she didn't even kill. Right? She didn't even kill anyone. But she's got a life probation. And then, don't know much about the father. I believe she's got a sister. But someone was saying they believe her sister passed away. Not sure about that. Hold on, I'm just going to check something. No, not that one. Okay. I'm just waiting to see if someone gets back to me about the father of Katie Proudfoot. Hold on. Thank <laughs> you. 
but apparently she doesn't have anything to do with her family. Why? Is she too good for them? Right? I don't know. Anyway, she then, I couldn't find much about what she did before when she was younger. Really not letting me on to any sides when I ask about anything. But I do know she was in the Navy. Everyone knows that. I do know she was a black belt in martial arts. So, no, I'm just checking out. So, I do know that much about her. So, she's not a woman who you could say, oh, wow, well, I can easily work my way around her because she's going to knock 10 tons of shit out of you. You know what I mean? So, right, let's have a look. Now, I don't really want to touch on Chris because I want to talk about him tomorrow night because he's got a lot in his family. We can find a lot out about his family. Uh, now, we all understand that apparently Sebastian was going to go and live with his dad in May. And Chris said he would work on Katie meaning get Katie to agree to this. But by then, Seth has gone and enrolled him in a school for next... Uh, not the summer, the um, autumn, the fall, or what they call it over there. The fall, isn't it? Not autumn. We call it autumn. So, it gone and enrolled him in a school, so he was all ready to go and live with his dad. Once he finished school in, in the summer, for the summer holidays, he was going to go and live with his dad. And then just go and visit his mum every second weekend. Just like I do at the moment with his dad. Right? Now, I'm wondering, I've just been coming up with a lot Hypothetics, cool things that could have gone on. Why? Right. Katie probably didn't want to give up um, custodial rights for uh, Sebastian. So I did at one stage think about had she put him into some. Uh, Organisation some for autistic children. Had she hid him somewhere in there? But to do that, she needs Seth's permission as well. And to be honest with you, what is she going to gain from that? What is she going to gain from putting him into some institution? Right? All she's going to gain is the fact that Seth will not get Chris Jojo of Sebastian. Right? But I can't see that now. I've changed my mind. on You all heard what I said. Right? So... What was that one? If you supervise, you can't just repeat offence or commit felony in your report to no one. Right. Is that supervising or unsupervised? That's supervision. Indefinite supervision. So I wouldn't say it's not it's unsupervised. Right. Anyway, so but I did, and I was even looking into all these organisations and places you, where children with autistic, with autism go. And, um, 
But then I suddenly changed my mind and thought, you know, that isn't going to work because that means this poor lad's going to be in there for the rest of his life. What is the point in doing that? What is her point in doing something like that? Right? Plus, why is she acting so shady? Right? Yes, she'll get into trouble. But why is Chris acting so shady as well? Right? Then, you look at... Uh, on the night it happened, right, she was on the phone for three hours. Three hours. Was I still in that hood day? Or was it because he didn't trust her? Perhaps he'd heard about her little she'd been having with a neighbour. So the only way he could control her is by speaking with her for three hours on the phone, knowing then that she can't go off to see this guy. But is this going to happen, happen every night? Don't think so. So what was it with that three-hour phone convert? As I Yeah. Yeah, that's me. I think something happened on the night. On the night. He's overstimulated. His sensories were all over the place. There's no way you're going to get him to calm down and go to bed at nine o'clock. Whilst I have trouble getting my own grandson to bed at sleeping ten o'clock at night. Right? So I, I seriously believe something happened, Gigi. Right now, she was on the phone for three hours, and apparently Chris said she was falling asleep, so I told her to get up, put the dogs in the cage, and go to bed. Okay, perhaps she did all that, but did she lock... Now, this is just hypothetical again. I'm just running through situations that could have happened. Hold on. Right, because there's all these different um, scenarios going around, right, different ones. So I'm just putting them out there, right. Did she actually lock that front door when she went to, when she went to bed? Right, I know for a fact that. When I come in on a day time, if I go out somewhere and then I come home and I'm not going out again, at, well, even if I am going out again, my front door is locked. Even if I'm going back out half hour later, my front door is locked. I grew up in an era where you could leave your front door unlocked, leave your back door unlocked. People would not tap on my mum's back window so, so that we could see who it was. And then they'd come straight into the kitchen. It automatically locks with keypad. Hmm. Okay, then. So this brings me to another question. <coughs> <coughs> A neighbour was reported saying she saw him on a ring doorbell. Don't know if it was the same day, but he got out the car. She carried on up the drive then with the car, and he went and got the post out the post post box, the letterbox. And she said she saw him skipping then along to the front door, but then suddenly he stopped and uh, turned round and went back towards the garage door. Is that because it's like, oh, shit, I don't know the key, the code to the front door. 
so went round by the garages. I don't think he knew the code to that front door. I really don't. Because she said it was very rare they used that front door. Right, very rare. It is interesting, isn't it? Why would you suddenly stop going towards the front door? If you know the pin, if you've got the key or the pin code to a door, you're just going that way, wouldn't you? Takes your shoes off and straight into his bedroom. Hold on. Straight into his bedroom because his bedroom was on the front of the house. So why did he stop going towards the front door and turn round and go back into towards the garage? It doesn't make sense. So the only thing that makes sense to me is he did not know the key, the code to that front door. Why? Right? And to be honest with you, if you had an autistic child, right, would you teach him the code to the front door? Exactly. Exactly. Yes, his shoes were by the front door. Because I've just realised now my grandson has learned how to take the chain off my front door. Right, so I'm going to... I don't think he knew it. I really don't. Because... It's like giving a child a key to your house, right? Now, I used to leave my front door keys in my door. And I always left them at a slight angle. So no one could push them out on the outside. Couldn't get anything in that lock and push my keys out. But I had to stop doing that. Because my son, when he was younger, used to sleepwalk. And I thought one day he could come down them stairs, he'll see them co keys, and he'll, he can open the door then, he'd be out. Right? Sleepwalking somewhere down the road. Or he'll probably hit that fresh air or tip him, he might wake up and come back in. But I didn't want to take the chance on my son getting out the house if he's in a state of sleepwalking. So... And there's no way I would give my, even if my grandson is like 15 tw years old, a key to my, for my flat. No. No. He's not having one. Right? So, it looks like I'm going to have to put another lock on my door now, on the inside. One which he can't reach. Maybe at the top of the door. Right, just to stop him from getting out that door now. But I don't think he knew that code. But why would you, I'm not going to why would you change the code to the door and then tell everyone that he knew the code? I'm also curious if there's an inside lock like a deadbolt. Yes! Right? I'm curious about that. Because for someone who worked in with insecurity and she could get her security for her, her own home at a cost, she had no ring doorbell, no home security, no uh, security lights apart from on the garage. But we know they, they weren't working that night. Because if they had been, they had to see who had took the beans out. Because those lights would have lit that person up as they've gone back into the garage. But Seth said the image was so grainy and so dark, you couldn't make out who it was. So. 
but I am curious if there was a deadbolt. I know if I had a child, uh, so say I had my living here, living with me. Oh my lord, that it would be like forked knocks. My front door would be. All you hear is these chains being took off, these locks being undone. There's no way I'd have just, like, I've got a deadbolt on my door. Right? I have to lock it with a key from the inside. It's just a deadbolt. But I swear to God, I'd have a lot more locks on my door. Yeah, you didn't know the garage door code, but... KP said this, yeah. I don't know any of the door codes. I really don't. Because would you not put all the security on your home if you work for a company? I know I would. I was only saying the other day, I would love to have a ring doorbell on my, flat, on my front door. But I can't do that because I've got a neighbour whose front door, as I come out of my front door, their front door is just to the left of me. So every time they went in and out, it would set my camera up, my camera off on it. And plus I get them moaning that I'm spying on them. The one I've got now is a... Um, the doorbell, but when you, when, I say when people use my doorbell, right, even though it's a great big doorbell and it's stuck right in the middle of my door, no one uses it, right? When you hit my doorbell, it comes through to my phone. It will show me someone's at the door, right, and I can answer it by my phone and talk to them, and, uh, but, I can have it recorded as well, so I could keep it if I need to, but I don't, I'll just have it so that I can hear my front door, because I've got quite a long hallway, and I've got one door, then you go through that, door, open that door, then you've got another bit of a passageway, and then you've got the outer door. So when that inner door is shut, I can't hear my front door being knocked. And I get so mad because delivery people, they won't ring the door. I'm, and I go to the door and I go, I can't hear you. And I'm pointing then to the flipping doorbell. Use it. But they don't use it. Are they scared that I'm going to record them? I don't even answer it half the time. So as soon as my phone... The door rings on my phone. I don't even touch my phone. I'll just go to the door. And I look for my people when I get there. If I don't know the person, and I'm not expecting a delivery, then I don't answer the flipping door. But then I can come back in and I answer it on my phone and talk to them through my phone. But nine times out of ten, I know who it is. I'm expecting a delivery. I'm expecting uh, a just eat, a food takeout thing. KP might have, hi Karen, KP might have called him back from front door to take out trash. It was dark. I believe KP said Sebastian only knew to the front door. I, don't, I know she said that, right? But I seriously don't think he knew the code to the front door. I don't. Uh, he's home alone after school till she gets out of work. Yeah, he's 15 years of old age. Yeah, he's autistic, but he's not stupid. He knows what is it, what he can do. He knows how to cook and prepare some food. You know what I mean? He knows what he's allowed to do. And he never goes outside anyway. He's got no friends. So, what time will you get home from school? I don't know what time your school's finished. I was finished about three. Between three and half three. So, 
she finished work about five-ish, maybe six, three, four, five. So he'd probably be at home about two and a half hours himself. That isn't that long, really, for a young lad. Like at 15. You've got to give them some independence. You've got to teach them to have some independence. You can't keep them mollycoddled, wrapped in bubble wrap for the whole lives. You can't do that. Because eventually this lad would go out and probably get a job, uh, go to work, you know what I mean? Make friends, go out on the evenings maybe. He's going to have his own life. He's high functioning. Yeah, he's high functioning. So, Sebastian is smart. All, oh, I'll tell you something, I've always said this. The government in the UK, I think, let down a lot of children. Let them down big time. Right? Because the resources aren't there for them. Now, children who are autistic, whatever level they're on, right, some are non-verbal, but they're still very clever, very smart. Very clever and very smart. So, I think more needs to be put into the, all these organisations, right, to help these young children and not just let them drift to the sideway and get forgotten about. Because there's some children in the UK, I don't know about the US, US but in the UK, I heard cases where a child has been Sebastian's age. Now, he was what? Diagnosed as autistic, what? In 2023? So it's only been in the last, what, six months or eight months that he was diagnosed as being autistic. How the hell did that possibly Karen did not take out? Hmm. Sebastian gets home from school about 3 p.m. Yeah, he has been seen wandering around the uh, neighborhood and he goes to get ice cream alone. Fair enough. But he knows his limits. He knows where he can go. Right? He had his own money as well. He didn't take none of that. Now, if this child, any child was, was running, walk, going to run away, right? For whatever reason. What are the main things they will take? One, straight away, the phone. Because the phone is like an extension to the right hand. It's like it's glued to their right hand. And then you take money. If you've got money, you take that. You put shoes on. Now we know Sebastian didn't like going outside without shoes, so that's automatic. He put shoes on. He's not stupid, as we keep saying. He's very smart, very clever. He would put a coat on or a jacket on because it's cold. <laughs> He'll get a backpack and put some snacks in there because we all know how teenagers like their snacks. Right? He'd have all that, but he took nothing. And sorry, that lad did not walk out that house. He didn't walk out that house. He wasn't kidnapped. He wasn't abducted. Right, well, none of that happened. And yes, I do believe we need to start looking at them at 80. Because what I was trying to get at with was if Katie had locked the door, right? Could someone have come in and took him? But as I said, there been there was no video of anything. Apparently there was a car in the area. But from what I understand, they tracked that guy and kicked that off the list. So 
There's no car, no people walking around the area, no video, no house, nothing, nothing, no video, nothing. And I know it's dark in that area, but come on. Some houses have lights outside. Some houses do have lights that come on outside. Sensor lights, maybe. He's going to walk past the house, and not one of them houses he walked past. Come on. Which means, because no lights come home, come on, no video got him, no door ring, ring doorbell caught him, nothing. I don't believe that. If he walked out of that house, I don't believe there is no camera. That's why I say he didn't walk out of that house. He didn't. Sorry. So, yes, we need to look at Katie. So does law enforcement. Chris could be covering for her. Right? He could be covering for her. Right? And that is why, like, I can never understand. Right? Chris was never there. Never there. Because if he was, I'm sure the police would have found out by now he was there. They just found him. You know what I mean? But he was never there. So why is Chris the one talking about what happened that night? He wasn't there. And Katie cannot sit there and say, oh, well, it's because I'm so upset I can't talk about it. And BS. BS, Katie. BS. Right, something happened Sunday night, you didn't realise till Monday morning, you then got on the phone to Chris, who's three and a half hours away, he's telling you what to do. You, he probably said, put him in the car, right? Because there's a rumour going around, I don't know who it was, that apparently uh, Cassie Barasok, her car, was seen outside the school. Don't know who that was. Now, where did Katie say she drove up to? The school. I think... Well, I think CP surprised them when they came home from Roadhouse. Sebastian gave him attitude. But you see, CP wasn't, I believe, that Chris was not supposed to be in that house anyway, full stop. Because of that, uh, where incident with the belt, when Sebastian told his teacher at school about it, and then Chris made out, oh, it was nothing. He was lying. No, he wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. Evil. Right, so I think there's a, an inv open case on that, and I think this, the the children services or whatever told CP he could not be in that house while the investigation was open, and that's why come February he moved down and stayed down there on the weekends because who on earth you? Red blooded man. Who's not wanna what red blooded man is not wanna gonna wanna come home on a Friday night to be with his wife, sleeping in his own bed with his wife. You know what I mean? Come on. Alright? So I think he wasn't supposed to be there. And perhaps it but then again, if he was there, would the neighbours not have seen him? But the neighbours not have seen him. The mattress in the garage is punishment. CP hit Sebastian on the head, stays out and died. Put it in work van. Put what in work van? The mattress or Sebastian? So, I think Katie was also angry with the fact that she couldn't have her husband there. 
And it's your fault. It's your fault, Sebastian, that Chris can't be here with me. You know what I mean? Yes, he could. Yeah. But I seriously think she was angry with Sebastian and got out of hand. If CP was there, then we're never going to know that unless they can track his car leaving the campsite and coming up to Tennessee. Or did his mum pick him up from the campsite? Right? And then take him back to his, and then Katie picked him up from the, his mother's. Because Chris is too controlling. If he heard the rumours that was going about that she was having an affair, he's not going to like that. Yeah. But as I said, he's going to go to his dad's in May. Right? It's his own fault he couldn't have be at the house. He shouldn't have done what he did. If he hadn't used the belt on Sebastian, right? Not once. That wasn't the first time he used the, used the belt on Sebastian, remember? One time was three years ago. But the time he spoke on the live, not on the Nancy Grace show, on the first live when it came out about him using the belt, he said Sebastian was 15. Yeah, he's very controlling. As I said, I remember once with my husband, um, we had this falling out, right? And uh, I we've gone to my mum, so I was in a foul mood. I wasn't talking to him, totally blanking him. Right? And my mum was just spoke to him. And all I heard to say is, you haven't learned, have you? Because she knew what I'm like. She, my mum knew what I was like. And there's no way of having anyone tell me what I could do. I said, the only people who could tell me what to do was my mum and dad. So if I my mum said, and she said, Angela, do this. I flipping done it. I done it. I jumped. I jumped for hoops. Whatever my mum or dad said, I did. But when I'm at home, in my home, right, the one I clean and make all homely and look after the kids in and cook the meal, no one told me. What to do? No one. But my husband never learned that. Never learned that. Right. And I also remember after I had my daughter, he was going back to my mum and dad's. And even though a freezer full of food i would lovingly prepared and put into the certain containers for one for him and one for my son and things like that. Lovingly prepared all these meals for, for while I was in hospital with my daughter. He went and stayed at my mum's, didn't eat one of those meals. And on the way home, mum, I'm glad she's had a little girl. And Finn said, oh, she'll have another one. No, that was it. My mum said, I'm glad she's had a little girl. Because she won't have no more now. Because I've already had a boy and now I've got my little girl. And it thinks, my husband turned around and said, Oh no, she'll have another one. My mum turned around and said, Hmm hmm. Right? Said, um, No way. In your dreams. Right? She will not have another one. And I didn't. I was quite adamant. I got my little boy, I got my little girl. I wasn't going to get anything different. CP said we would have heard him if he jumped out the window. Exactly. 
So I don't know, but when did he go back to work then? If he was there Sunday night. When did he go back to work? Now, don't be fooled. He did not start work at 6 o'clock in the morning. They don't start work till 7 a.m. They work 7 till 7. Like, if they do 12 hour shifts, it'll be 7 till 7 because now he's on a night shift and this, it starts at 7 p.m. So they don't start work till 7 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, he punched in at seven. So, where was he when he this phone call come through at, what, five past six, ten past six? He's 20 some minutes away at the uh, Yogi Bear Caravan Park, right? Campground. So, he probably, if it was me, I'd probably leave at about half six so that I get there nice and early so I'm not rushing about, right? But some people get their spot on. Fact is, I'm not getting any, there any earlier. Oh, no. They don't pay me for it, you know what I mean? He wasn't in the crane at then. Because there'd be another guy in the crane, probably. But do they work the cranes at night? You know, when JLR was round there, he went round there. CP doing side jobs now. CP was sent home from work before 10 a.m. for screwing up at work. When the day that um, I know that the uh, a colleague said he put a complaint in about him and they got him off the crane about 10 a.m., between 10 and 11 a.m. in the morning and he stormed off the site. But what the hell was he going to work for if he knew his stepson was missing? Why would you not think? And I've heard so many people going on about this saying, Well, then he's apparently he's rushing home. No, he wasn't. He go to work, he didn't leave there till about 10 a.m. that morning. And that's only because a colleague who worked there didn't like his attitude and all this lot and got him kicked off the uh, crane. He would have still been there till God knows what time if he hadn't been for that colleague. He had no intention of coming home that day. Right, because if he had, why didn't he just phone his work so and say, mate, I can't get in today. Sorry, there's a family emergency. I've got to get back up to Tennessee. Police have been, police have been called. I've got to get back up to Tennessee. He could have been home by 7, 8, 9. He could have been home by 10 a.m. If that was the case. But oh no, he goes to work, starts work at 7 a.m., up in the crane till 10 a.m., 10, between 10 and 11. Yeah, and apparently that's illegal. Yeah. Because he's not got his full attention. If you're listening to someone on the phone and you've got your work say your PC and you're trying to listen to what they say, I wouldn't be able to do that. I don't know who else could. CP was at work early burying Sebastian. But he couldn't do it at work because they do a night shift. But do they do a, a, a Sunday night shift? That's the question. Was they doing a night shift during the weekend? Because I know when C, uh, JLR walked around past his site, right? For the security people come and followed him and moved him off. Right? There was no, there, you could see the cranes, but they weren't working. And it's by a hospital, so you're not going to have all this clanging and bumping and banging and going on during the night. So, what did they do during the night there then? If they're on a night shift? Did they just do the groundwork? No, not use the cranes. Just do work that needs doing on the ground. 
because I can't. There was no one at work that night when JLR walked around. Yeah, I I remember years ago, people who used to work night shifts because they did that, one of my works where I did, they did a night shift for some order. They was trying to get an order out super, super quick. I went, shoved out the rear end, I'm not working nights. <laughs> anyway, they used to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, have Friday, Saturday, right? Because if they work Friday night, they'd be going into Saturday, which would mean double time. So from 12 p.m., 12 a.m., Friday evening, Saturday morning, sort of thing, it's double time. So you're looking like at like eight, another seven hours at double time for those workers. So they didn't do a night shift on a Friday, but they used to come in on a Sunday, no, not a Sunday, no. No, they didn't work on a Sunday. They had Friday, Saturday and Sunday off, and then they come back in Monday night. They only did four nights a week. I don't get, right? Now, I even swayed to that idea as well that he didn't get home. Right? Snip from work very early to gig and berry. It was already at work after berry. Right, okay. So, I did even thought of that. If, but then I thought, no. But if they can prove, give me evidence that she's either handed law enforcement those items of clothing and law enforcement have got them, then he came home. If law enforcement have not got those items of clothing, which is a bit controversial at the moment because no one knows, even TBI was not happy with Seth for asking about it. Why? So I don't think they had the items of clothing. Because why would TBI get mad with Seth? It's an adequate question. Have you got the clothing that he wore on the Sunday night? Yes, yeah, son. Why? Don't have to get mad. Just say no or yes. Well, I don't think they had the clothing. And it's made them look stupid. Because if they haven't got the clothing and Katie can't produce those items, then that tells me Sebastian didn't get home Sunday night. And that would throw my theory right out the flipping door. Right, so well, what could happen? Someone said, that, I think it said it took about 10 minutes to drive home from the state house. The neighbours are starting to talk. Just have to sift through the rumours. There's some truth. There's always some truth in rumours. Always. But as you said, you've got to sift through it. I think, should we believe that? Or should we knock that to one side? There's always some truth in rumours. But it's very hard to work out what is the truth and what isn't the truth. But like I said, if if they prove to me they've got those items of clothing, then he came home. And my theory is still in play. If they say they haven't got the clothing and Katie cannot give them the items of clothing, then in my eyes, he didn't get home. And that throws my theory out the door. And then I'll be thinking, okay, so he didn't come home. What could happen in that time from the steakhouse home? I'm sure it said it took about 10 minutes to get home. Right? So what could happen in 10 minutes? You know what I mean? If something happened, she must... Oh, I don't even want to think about it. You know what I mean? Because that would be rage for something to happen. If it didn't come home, 
He either didn't come home and Katie took the garbage out or something happened after they got... As I said, if they can prove that they've got the items to clean, then I stick with what I've said. But if they can't prove they've got the clothing and Katie cannot give them the clothing, then he didn't come home. It's as simple as that. And... I don't know why the law enforcement in Sumner County are dragging their feet. They obviously haven't got enough evidence to impress charges. I don't know. But we've got to keep this case open. We've got to keep on at it. Because I do not want this being a never Summer Moon, Utah, Wells case. On what's that ever like they, they've been comparing this case with? A five-year-old was it, who went missing eight years ago now, and the parents are in prison are doing time for it because the father admitted to killing him, but they still haven't found his body. I don't even want it to be like that. I want Sebastian found either way, right, and brought home to his dad, right, and then I want justice done. Right, and the only way that I can see them getting any just any evidence, solid evidence, if someone talks. Right, look at Adam Montgomery. He thought he got away with the murder of his little girl, Harmony. Years went by, even though the mother was pushing the police and pushing the police to do something. Eventually. They took it up, like two years after she went missing, and put it missing. I don't know, because even if you got on that plane, it was a private plane, you still have to have a manifesto as to who's on that flight. You know what I mean? Anyway, with that argument, so what it took to do this, was okay, the stepmother got off very lightly. She got off very lightly. But they piled all these charges on the stepmother. And she thought, I'm not doing this. I've got my car gear I can use. And she used that car and she, she squealed like a little pig. She went squealing off like a little piggy. She told them exactly what happened, where it happened, when it happened, how it happened. Right? I believe she could should have done at least 10 years, not 18 months. But that's how they got him, through her testimony. Now, if they can get someone to squeal like a little piggy to law enforcement, and confirm what they are saying is true, then they've got something. And that's why I say, keep putting the pressure on KT. She was the one who was there. Right? Apparently Chris wasn't there, and we know Seth wasn't there, because he's on camera at work. He works in the um, corrections. Guys, there's cameras everywhere there because they're not going to have one corridor, one door without a camera because of the criminals there. Every door, every corridor has got a camera. So they've got him wherever he went, they've got him on camera. If the rumours are correct, from the neighbourhood, the guy that Katie was going to see has actual footage of Katie and Sebastian going to his house and he's turned that over, over according to this neighbour. Well, I also heard the other day that she was seen talking to this so-called neighbour on her driveway. Chris wasn't there, obviously. But they do need someone to talk. They're not going to get anyone otherwise. So, 
I think if he keep putting the pressure out there on KT, or even Chris, because if KT is the one who's done this, Chris is not going to be wanting to go down for life, is he? No, his ego's not going to let him do that. He's going to talk. He's going to drop her right in it. Right. So, let's see who squeals first. Katie or Chris? She's on medication, I believe, as well. Because she just seems so zoned out on all these interviews she does. Really? Hmm. I know Jay Allah has got his uh, certain neighbours around there that talk to him and let him know. Well, yeah, we just got to hope and pray. Keep putting the pressure on Katie. Keep putting pressure on Chris. You know what I mean? Because if he's not at work, if he's not working because of this, he's not got no money coming in. No, I don't see him just taking a blame for anything she's done. I can see him dropping her right in it. And if she, she was the one at home, apparently they've got, they must have proof that he was down there. Someone said they have got video of him or something down there. So, I don't know. Too many rumours. And I think law enforcement need to act a lot quicker. And I hope to God, like, I put on a, a live the other day that it's been a month already, um, two months already, it hasn't. We're coming up to two months, I think. And pretty much, if, if you're awesome like it, thanks, Keith. Oh, thank you. I did bring up her papers. But from what I understand, um, if you look on what I'm showing here, if this is the mother... Pain, Penny, I... Had a charge of unlawful wounding, a felony, six, right? And she got, what did she get now? Uh, five years for the sentence, but four years suspended. So she only did one year in prison, but then she's got the 99 year probation. And it's indefinite supervision. So, and you get the picture of what? <coughs> GG. <coughs> but apparently, yeah, um, hold on, hold on. Apparently, she doesn't have anything to do with her family. Um, but I, I don't know if you, you well, you must have heard about the uh, big Unite Together by Seth. Now, I'm, I'm sorry, I agree with Seth. This should have happened at the beginning, not now. And the only reason we want to unite to find Sebastian is because he's getting this information, right, that they're not. And Chris, I've noticed, if anyone is doing anything like a search, look at that knocked divers with the phone call. Uh, I'm the one that took on the drive round. I'm the one who knows where everything is. I know you need to. I can tell you anything you want to tell. Right. Um. 
What was that? That may not be her though. Circulating things about Kate being young teen and hurting a child. I don't think that was Kate even though I heard that. You know what I mean? I heard that. But I've not seen any proof of it. I've not seen nothing. So unless I get proof of something or someone brings it up in chat like now, I don't say anything. Like I got all the paperwork on the divorce. I thought I'm not putting this out there. I want to know Seth's side of the story as well. And we got Seth's side. And I still didn't put it out there because that isn't helping find Sebastian. I watched a lot the other night where a girl did book the one about Katy Perry. It was a different and a different Katy Perry. Penny. Oh, right. <laughs> yes, it's very strange. Yeah. It's like they've got control of her, you know what I mean? Well, she's got no family to fall back on, you know what I mean? No one to go running off to. They've got control of her. And that's why I think there was a possible hangover that morning. But I, hi, Bobby. I think there was. I don't think it's so much Seth. It was Chris that came up to Seth. Right? Whether it was Seth's idea to, look, let's just put all this aside and let's just work together, possible. But he's not stupid. He, apparently, law enforcement are talking to Katie every day. But I don't talk to Chris, or uh, Seth. But now, he's tried to get in touch with Katie. She's not answering his phone call. Hang oh, on. Anyway, so. But she's not answering any phone calls. So how's this search going on, Katie? How's this, we work together to find our son going, Katie? Oh, have you not been to the bike shop yet? Oh, you went the weekend, didn't you? Yeah, forgot about that. But you got next weekend, you can go there again. Or you can go on a motor rally, a bike rally next weekend, maybe. So, and I think Seth is realising He's not going to get anything out of them. Okay, thank you. But um, he's not going to get nothing out of KP. Now, CP is the one who will bring it. Because have you ever thought, perhaps Katie might get a bit, hmm, Seth and Chris are getting on very well lately. I'm not having this. And she might be the one to talk to law enforcement and drop quizzing it. <laughs> oh dear. CP is running. Oh God, get my mouse to work. Hang on, hang on, not that one. Uh, this one. CP is running the show. Why doesn't KP talk to Seth? All three. Got along before CP called Sebastian. No, to be honest with you, I don't think they did get along. CP made out in that one interview at the beginning how everything friendly and yeah, we have our discussions, we have our disagreements, but we we talk it out. And BS, BS. I don't think it was all good with them at all. I really don't. He, he didn't go in the house. He'd wait in the car for Sebastian to come home from school. And then Sebastian would grab his stuff and jump in the car and they'd go. 
Okay, so Chris did stop. He went by Settled. Was up. Was up. He said, "Is everything okay?" So, oh yeah, it's Seth. I did so job. So, so you can ride your flute to my windscreen. That was the first meeting I had. But then he come back a second time. And I think CP is the one who wants to know what's going on. He has to know. He's controlling. And nothing else is going to change that way. So, next house. What else have we? Right. The police law enforcement say they've got no evidence of foul play. Did they do a forensic search of the house, the bedroom, the garage, anything like that? Yeah, I think it was uh, Chris that wanted to do, but apparently at first, when you come back, I think it was the first time or the second time, there's a, I think it was the second time. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of shouting and cursing going on. But she's not helping herself by running off to the campground every chance she gets. She's not. Christ's sake! Would I want? Would I? Would you rather sit in a five wheeler or sit in a nice? What, one, two, three, possible four bedroom house. Because don't forget, they've got that loft area above the garage, so that could be classed as their bedroom. So they've got their bedroom, they've got um, Sebastian's bedroom, they've got Fife's bedroom, which is on the same level as Sebastian, but at the back of the house. And then you've got their bedroom at the back of the house, and above them is the loft. Over the garage area. Because you see, when you do that house tour, it shows the stair guide, so you know there's stairs going up there. Right? But she's not. I'd rather be in the house than in a five wheeler. I really would. It would drive me batty being stuck in a five-wheeler for four or five days a week. I'd be taking myself to the nearest mental institution with the white jackets because that's how psycho I would get. I just can't get past mum leaving the family home when you're sick. No, I can't. It's like they said, the door is open. We can't wait for him to walk through them doors again. Oh, but the doors are firmly bolted now. You know what I mean? The doors are firmly bolted, so that's BS as well. Right. We discussed that. Uh, we discussed that. I was, just, I was just going through my mouth today. Right, because I don't really want... I've got a lot to talk about, Chris, and we can talk about him tomorrow. Right. I'll find him missing on you, him. And, um... Can't be that hard. Okay. In the comments, please tell me, that like, last interview she did, do you think Chris was there? Or... Not there when she did that last interview at the house. I know she was looking at her notes, but do you really think she was in that house on her home without Chris being there to watch over her to make sure she says what she has to say? <laughs> Ten times. Right, but um. It's just, one of them needs to talk, and I think the police not doing anything. Just keep pulling them in every fucking day. 
we need you to come in, come in next day. Uh, phone them. Can you come in? We need to speak to you. Get on me. Keep pulling on me every flipping day, even if they go, this is harassment. Why is it harassment? Are you guilty? You've got something to hide. We're just talking. You know what I mean? We'll call them in every week. Just, so we're going, just to give you an update, but we need to speak to you as well. We need an update. I think the more pressure you put on Katie and Chris, one of them is going to crack. I'd be very surprised. Yes, I think he told Seth he was tired of him and Katie being dragged through the mug. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because that picture. Oh, where's that picture? I bet I haven't got it now. Oh, I see if I've got it in my emails. Because that picture of him is. Is this it? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. No. Is this it? No. No. No, it's on my Facebook page. But, um, the way he's standing there, like. My teeth are perfectly fine, thank you, Jeff. It's my accent. I don't speak like uh, proper English. Like a lot of you like might think we do, but we don't. We talk a lot of slang. We cut letters off. We cut endings off. Or the beginning of a word we might cut off. We might not say the full word. Like fecking. Instead of saying fecking, we say fecking. They don't like the mud pool. Too dirty. Um... It was, it was like he was leaning into him. And I thought, I'm sorry, but if someone was doing that to me, um, but, so, but look how Seth is uh, standing there by the car. Well, I'm sorry, he can't lean back any further. He's right up against the corner of the car and the opening. You know what I mean? Couldn't get any further back. <clears throat> what was that? I wouldn't care what my husband said if I was married and had a missing child. I want to work with the father of my child so we could try to find him. He would just have to get over it. Exactly. Hold on. Hold on. Exactly. I don't care. I would sell my, sell my soul to the devil if it meant getting my child back. I've always said, I will jump, I will take that bullet for my child. I really would. So, and no man is going to tell me who I can speak to and who I can't speak to. He's the father of my child. I would be talking to him. So, I can't get over, it's just annoying to see, some people say it's DV, right? But come on, and then I thought, I, I literally thought about this, thought, come on, she can't be DV, she's black belt in martial arts and she does MM, some, some sort of fighting, she used to, she was in the Navy, right? But then I realised, I watched um, an FBI file, and it's about a two cases, right? And this woman had gone missing, and she was in the armed forces, I think, I can't remember what part. And she was a martial arts and all this stuff, but her husband killed her. 
Right. So I think, yes, anyone could be a black belt in something, but when it comes to your husband, you carry down a little bit, maybe. Not me. No way. If I was black belt, my husband wouldn't. Get... Honest to God, <laughs> my husband never stood a chance with me. He did. <laughs> And I remember once he was playing with my daughter, right? And this was when we used to do a martial arts. Or was, or was we doing martial arts thing? Yes, we was doing martial arts at the time. And she was playing with her dad, play fighting. And I just turned around and said, come on, come on, babes. You know how to throw a punch, right? And as, as I said it, my husband looked at me. And as he looked back, she threw this punch. My husband literally went spinning around and, landed and fell on the floor. Literally KO'd him. Right? And I was going, you okay down there, love? Yeah. Okay, he's alive. Thank you, Gigi. Right? And, um, but I just laugh at things like, if, if my husband fell over, I'd go, are you okay, babe? Yeah, I'm okay. And then I'd be in laughter. I'm one of those people that would literally pee myself with laughter at someone's misfortune. I'd make sure I was okay first and then laugh. KP had some deep knowledge on ships and navigation. Called... Yeah. She did, she, wasn't she, an IT, something to do with IT, um, communications. But, yeah, JJ, he's back right up in that corner of that car, where the car door is hinging. You know what I mean? He couldn't get any further back, and he's leaning into him. I'll be going, move your face out of mine before I knock it out. You know what I mean? No one will come into my space like that. No one. And I must admit, I I will be teaching my granddaughter that. Right? I will be teaching her. I don't need to teach my grandson. God, he can hit me and knock me out, no problem, and he's six years old. But um, my granddaughter, I'll be teaching her to stick up for herself. But uh, I think, young girl, it's like I say, you shouldn't teach a child to hit back. Uh, what? What? Yeah. If some guy, some lad wants to come hit my granddaughter, then my granddaughter's going to have the right way to kick his ass. Yeah, she did. She, she's very clever in installation, communications. Some people have said that she had, because apparently it was rumoured that some of the <coughs> home security cameras had gone offline that night. Had gone offline that night. And people are going, that's a bit weird, isn't it? As some security cameras have gone down. Hey, ARC XX79. Good to see you here. <coughs> exactly. You'd have your house fully secure, wouldn't you? I can't believe that. Hold on, I've got to get some. It's all right with me talking. I don't have it all day, but when I start talking, my throat gets very dry. <coughs> because that's part of the medication I'm on. Even if I'm just walking, if I walk around my flat doing general housework, my throat will get very dry. So, any, so talking doesn't help. So... But I might end up going to the doctor to see if I can get something to clear this off. I'm, you know what I mean? Anyway, happy bird. Good to see you. 
So where was the security then? Because apparently uh, their Blinks works fan has been at the house several times now. So what are they doing at the house? They've knocked up the van. So what are they doing at the house? Are they put? Are they putting security? Oh no, they're not putting security up at their house. But they've got a camera on their five wheeler. Yeah, I need to give you something about this because I got a cold. Whenever I go down to my daughter's, don't get me wrong, I love going to see my daughter and her partner and my grandson. I love it. I love my time down there. But whenever I come home, I always end up with a flipping cold. Right, but it just, since my treatment two years, coming on two years now, my immune system has been lowered, so it takes me a lot longer to get over a cold. And because it takes a lot longer to get over a cold, it can get onto my chest. So I really need to get to the doctors and sort that out. So, right, um, I'm not really saying much on here, but in 2020, was it two? 2022, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And in March, April, May, in the June, I had an operation. And then in the September, I went and had one week. Only, I was lucky to caught it early. I had one week of radiotherapy. Right? But because of where the radiotherapy was done, it's, he probably hit my uh, lungs. Right? So I've got some scar tissue on my lungs. So they say, if you ever go to the doctor and they go, oh, we, you've got some... You can hear some on your lungs, scar tissue. So I really should go to the doctors and get this checked out now because it's going on too long. So, and as I said, my immune system is weakened by it. And it just does my head in because I, I love my independence, but it just, I haven't got that no more. I haven't got it no more. I just get tired so much quicker. I used to literally go around my house and clean my house from top to bottom every flipping day. And I mean, I'd be on the floor scrubbing my carpets and things like that for the slightest little bit of dirt. Now it takes all my time and energy just to get the flipping vacuum out. So when I do, I have to do it a little bit at a time now. Like I concentrate on my kitchen, my bathroom, my my living room is normally kept quite, quite, it's clean, it's tidy, but it's not as clean, it's not as tidy as I used to have it. You know what I mean? But I just haven't got that energy no more to do it. I haven't got the motivation. And I'm on medication for the next five years for it. And then I'm on medication. Because of the medication I'm, I'm on for that, I'm on some other medication, which is to help me sleep. But it makes me very oof, unmotivated. I fall asleep whenever now in the day. Like this morning, I got up, I phoned my son, come on here, set this live up, went back, sat down, finished my coffee off and fell asleep on the sofa. So that's just my day, typical day for me. So, it's just get tired of every day. Anyway, forget that. We're not here about me. We're here about Katie. Right? So. Really? I was lucky. I did, as I said, I found it myself. I went to the doctor straight away. 
that got me in. I found it in the Feb beginning of March, right time, and I think it was just before Mother's Day, believe it or not, yes, that I found out that, right about it, that they told me what it was, and so I got seen pretty quick. I really did. They put me on medication straight away. Straight away. Even before I got any other checks done. So they caught it pretty quick. But as I said, there's side effects to everything and that's Thank you. Thank you, Dippy. That's old age. I won't tell you. I'm knocking on. Well, you know what I had to do the other day? Because I couldn't even remember how old I was. Had to type in, go on my calculator and go 2020, 2024 minus my year I was born. I was nearly in tears. 58. For 58. So, but I try and be active. And this is how. And I do. Uh, if I get too stressed about anything, I get my diamond art, five D diamond art out, and I'll do some of that. It stresses me straight away. So yeah, I'm fifty-eight. This year I was, as my son politely told me, remind me, not long before you get your free bus pass, mum. Not long before I knock you out, son. Really? I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Just because we're, we're old. But we're not, we're not old, we're knowledgeable. We've got a lot more knowledge to these youngsters, to these babies. That's how I look at That's good. Well, as I said, I'm coming into my second year. It'll be two years in October. Because I, I could say two years in June when I had the application, but I didn't get the actual, because I had to have radiotherapy afterwards, I didn't get the actual all clear till October. So I always go by October. So I'm coming up to two years. So. I'll just take each day as it comes. Anyway. So, what are we talking about? I've got to go back through my chat now. Um, oh, God. I'm trying to find what we were talking about. My memory's gone. Let's talk with my notes again. Um... What was he talking about? Oh, there was something I wanted to show you as well. I'm sure I've got it. Was it in my emails? Oh, get up there. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to if I can zoom in a bit for you. Is Sarah Nebel or Stacy Spang Jackson? She goes, this must be on a Facebook somewhere because she goes, yep, he was at my house for a few minutes on Sunday afternoon with his mum and his cousin. So is that the neighbour? Uh, is that the neighbour that's there? Because I wouldn't, I don't know. Because. <laughs> you're okay, Dippy. Dippy Bird, you're okay. But no, um, 
It's just weird. That came up on her Facebook page today. This picture did. And I thought, who's Stacy? I heard she went to someone's house, but I thought it was, was it before they went for dinner or after they went for dinner? I'm not sure because she's come out with so many different stories. Like she said, he came home and dropped all the gross, the, the snacks off. And then went for dinner. In another interview, she doesn't say that. She just says they went to pick up the niece, met with the aunts, went to that place, CP or wherever it was they went to, and then bowling, and then they went for dinner. She doesn't say coming home again before dinner. I'm thinking, why she, okay, we don't need to know everything. We don't need to disclose every little thing we do. Katie, you do. Yeah, actually. Uh, let's have a look at this. Let's have a look. All right. No, I'll do it like I'll do it like um right because I need to find I need to find the post that put that up first, or I might just share that on the you know say like, who's this person is it? But was she having an affair with a neighbour? Because I hate to think if he was and he was married, that isn't gonna look not right. And we all know how she likes to have marital affairs because was she still not married to Seth when she met Chris? Because Seth said that uh, Sebastian had been in Chris's life for a long time because uh, Katie was seeing Chris while our divorce was going through. While I was still going through the divorce, they hadn't been divorced, they were still going through this divorce, right? She was seeing Chris saying. So, so we all know how she likes to have her bit of marital affairs. But he's not, he's not innocent in all this either, is he really, Chris? Because... Apparently, from what I understand, he was with Nina because he said, this is what makes me laugh. Uh, my head spin, I mean, not laugh. My head spin. He said he'd been in Sebastian's life for about half of his life. Well, he's 15, so we know he was seven or eight when that SA happened. When she was, when he was with his mother and Chris then. So we know he'd been in Sebastian's life since he was at least seven. Right? How old's his daughter? Is she about six now? Right? Because that's. That doesn't make sense. If she's about six now and she is being in Katie's life for at least seven to eight years, yep. Yeah. How does he have a daughter who's six years old? By Nina. Mm-hmm. She, his daughter must, should be about, would, I should imagine, be about the same age as Sebastian, if that was the case. If he was with Katie when Sebastian was at least seven, we know that much. His daughter was about three, two, three, when... He lost custody. Oh, hold on, hold on. Sugar, I got on me. Uh, oh.
Oh. Sorry, I just had to plug my laptop in. Right? How old's this door at? I'll tell you something, I read that and I but I also read Steph's side. I wouldn't say it's totally innocent, but I don't believe a thing that he assaulted Sebastian. Right, so, I don't know, so, but as I'm saying, if he was in Sebastian's life from the age of, say, seven, right, his daughter was, what, about three at the time? So, that would make her seven, eight, nine, that would make her about ten now, then, ten or eleven. That would make more sense. But if you tell me his daughter is only six years old, then the maths is not adding up. Do you know what, Dippy Bird? I've always said I'm here for the children. Right? I'm here for the children. I don't care about the parents. Really. Good. Well, I do care about Seth because I worry that he's going to um, where. Take himself to ill to the of no return. But I'm not, I'm more worried about the child. So if the parents want to say, you know, what he was meaning was, don't forget that week as well, he had guy or person make. That he had Sebastian when you hadn't. Right? Um, so that was false hope. If she was, we know she's a cheat, a cheater. Yeah, exactly, DJ. Right? But as I'm saying about Seth, with what he said the other night, I'm too much into cons about that is at the point where he couldn't give two flying ducks right couldn't give two flying ducks he's out there to find his son he don't care if people don't like the fact that he's um hold on hold on He doesn't care if people don't like him. He doesn't, because he's not there. Yeah, he did cheat on you, okay? Yeah. So they're both cheaters. And as G, uh, GG said, a cheater is also a liar. Right. Because she was seeing uh, Chris while the, before the divorce had even gone through it, Seth said that himself. Cheaters cheating, imagine that. Yep, yep. How dare you? You know what I mean? How do you think his ego will take that? If he found out she was cheating on him. Which is why I think she goes down there with him now to work when he goes down to Mississippi. Because he don't trust her. He doesn't trust her being at home. So he, he tells her, I want you down there. I want you down there Monday to Friday and then we'll come back up here on the weekend. She can't be on her own. He's not going to have it. 
is rotten too. <laughs> and short. <laughs> well, dippy behave. Dippy, dippy. Right. <laughs> well, he's not going to take too kindly to it, is he? He's going to be very controlling. And she probably knew that would happen if he found out. So, but then again, we've not heard of him cheating on Katie, though. But this time, this time, JLR, get digging. <laughs> if anyone's going to find that information out, JLR will find it out. <laughs> He's everywhere and anywhere JL always. Whatever case is on, he can be on two or three cases at the same time. I love him. But there's some things he says that I don't agree with. But I'm not going to put him down because he's, uh, he's boots on the ground. But as I said about Seth, what he's saying, he's gone through all that torment that week with that person's and they had Sebastian and all this law, and then to find out we all knew he hadn't but we couldn't take that chance right and then to find out he didn't have Sebastian and then he's got Chris coming up in his face and he's thinking you know what I've had enough of this fucking shit pardon my French I've had enough of this Let's just drop our egos and let's just get on with it. And let's just work together to find Sebastian. But as I don't, they're not going to tell him nothing. They want him to tell them what he knows. So this working together is not going to happen. He's already said that Katie, he said on an interview with Peter Hyatt, that Katie hasn't said fully happened that day or that night. She hasn't. He knows Katie. He's with her a long time. You know what I mean? He knows her. He knows what she's like. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a story. Years and years ago, when my kids were very little, we used to live in this block of flats. It was like one, two, round for It's like two stories high, right? And we had this one neighbour on the top floor. And it was hilarious. There was always so much going on. Some arguments, some shouting, some something going on. And one night, we're sitting in the passageway by my front door. And we're down by the steps, these two little steps that was there that went down. And the neighbours from downstairs were off by me. And they, the guy gone, this is better than these genders. <laughs> oh, see, flipping right it is. But, you know, um, so he, he's not going to be too kind, too good, happy about her playing away. What I want to know is, where was Sebastian while she was playing away? Did she leave him at home? Why? Did she le No, she couldn't have left him at home because she was on a three-hour court while she could have. From whatever time she wanted to go off and have a bit nooky with her neighbour. Why? And then she's come back at nine o'clock and that's when it's all kicked off. Hazel, ZCP is on his fifth marriage. He's type, he's type who thinks it's okay to cheat on his wife, but wouldn't stand for the wife to cheat on him. Yeah. That's true. He wouldn't. His ego is too big. No one's going to cheat on me. You know what I mean? It's the sort of guy, like if she was dating him and then you called it off, he's the sort of guy that would go out and say, 
Oh, I finished Judah. I've had enough of that. I finished seeing it. I don't, yeah, I told you I didn't want to see it no more. He'd be that sort of guy. But I heard when it came the second time, apparently there was raised voices and a lot of swearing, cursy words. He's setting Seth up to flip out on Katie. I don't know. He knows that Katie knows more than she is saying. Now, could he work in partnership with Chris? I kind of like to say, look, I know you weren't there. You weren't there. You was down in Mississippi. Right, Katie is the one that was in that house with Sebastian. She is, she knows more than what she's telling us. Right, so could he have said that something like that to Chris? And perhaps now Chris might be looking into it. Perhaps Chris has said she's acting a bit weird. Right? She's always acted weird in my opinion. She's not a mother. She's got just the egg, the, the uh, carrier. You get these mothers that have children and don't really want them, put up with them, curse at them, sh scream at them, saying, you ruin my life. Well, you had a choice. You had several choices. One. As I always say to young girls, keep your legs crossed. Two, take precautions. And if that doesn't work, then there's adoption. Why didn't you just, you know what I mean? She wasn't ready for a child, but then she was with Seth, and Seth was prepared for it. What she wasn't ready for was a child with special needs. <laughs> right she she wasn't expecting that and I don't think any mother who has a child to find out that unless like um, you've got a child with Down syndrome you're told beforehand because there's tests they can do but they can't do tests for a child with autism in the womb there's no such tests So, Hazel, now what if CP is suspected that KP was cheating and had someone watching the house? What if the three hours was a lie, were a lie and once she got Sebastian to bed, she turned off the video slipped out the back door? Hmm. But why would Chris back her up on that three-hour phone call, though? Why would he say that was on a three-hour phone call? Plus, they'd have a record of it. They'd have a record on their phone log. They'd have a record of that three-hour phone call. Whether he was talking on the other end, they don't know. You can't tell. But there is apparently a test somewhere where they can tell if someone is talking on a phone call. Yeah. Yeah, Karen. So it's, I don't know what to think, but there's the scenarios, right? One, she, he didn't come home, right? Some happened, hangover, whatever. Two, he came home, there was an argument, he hit his head, not realised it was that bad, gone to sleep, passed. I still think that because of what she said in that first interview. Or oh, Katie didn't want Sebastian. She wasn't ready to give up um, her rights as such. Yeah. 
Yeah, we all say it. Your phone will give you... If you're going to do something bad, leave your phone at home. And I think that's probably possible. But what card did you use? Unless his sister, uh, his, sister his mother came down. But then they'd have her on camera. Because don't these sides have camera entrances? Because if not, I wouldn't want to stay there because you don't know who's coming and who's going. Well, we knew she was going, coming and going to her neighbour's house, put it that way. Or perhaps Sebastian found out she was, she was seeing the neighbour. Uh, well, apparently from a colleague, he did work that day. He was at work on the Monday. But not at 6 a.m. like he says. He clocked in at 7 a.m. That's the time to start in the morning at 7 a.m. And he got off the crane between 10 and 11 a.m. Because they didn't like uh, a colleague was saying about his behaviour, how he is, his whole... His whole outlook on the work was not right. CP gave the friend the code to the door. That person went to took Sebastian and has him hid and using that to punish KP and control. Yeah, I think that's the reason he's... Saying to her, it's not because she's scared of being in the house. That's a load of BS. Right? I think it's because he knows about that affair and he's not having it. Nope, you're coming down where I can see you every day. I have to keep my hopes alive up that he is alive. Sharon Matthews. Yeah. Yep. Do you know the uh the uncle who hit that little girl? You know he died. He was in on the news the other day, the other week, he died. Don't know what of. But yeah, she had her daughter hit because she was planning, so she said she was planning to leave her husband. But then her husband didn't go to work that day. And she already put into motion about the uncle collecting her daughter from school. And then she was come to the uncles with the other kids. But because the, her husband didn't go to work, she couldn't get out of the house. And then because her daughter never turned up home, this is the story she said. Um, I can't really believe that. Uh, but because the daughter didn't come home, her husband or whatever and, and friends are saying, phone the police. Your daughter's not here. Phone the police. So that's what she's had to do. And because she lied, the lie got bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think her plan was to leave her husband. Yep. Yeah. I think in the end it came down to money, yeah. But I also, I do believe at the beginning she was going to leave her husband. Good. Couldn't happen to a nice man. No, it couldn't, could you? But things do happen like that. And I know in cases in the USA, there's people been missing for years and years and years. And then they find them in a, a log cabin somewhere in deep in the forests and things like that. She looks like her to Katie does. <laughs> she, was, she, she had her own educational problems though, didn't she? So, I don't know. But I do believe in that case, she did want to leave her husband. Bye. But she just couldn't get out of that house that day with the kids. And then the lie became a lie and a bigger lie and a bigger lie and a bigger lie. A bit like this. 
so he could be somewhere. Perhaps he's got another man on the side that no one knows about. You know what I mean? So, um, it's just, oh, so confusing. And because law enforcement aren't giving us nothing, we've got nothing to go on. And I was on, I have the YouTube on my TV. I hardly watch normal TV now. And you know what? Everything is all about what we'd already spoken about. All these videos that was out the weekend. And people are rehashing them again. I'm thinking, really? And you know what I ended up watching? I ended up watching another YouTuber moaning about two other YouTubers. I was thinking, oh, God, drama. By the socks, live right down the, live right down the street. Mm. See, we'll look into them tomorrow because, I'm, as I said, I'm going to look into CP, uh, Chris, and, no, I'm not on about that, no, it was, um, it was two, two YouTubers who, one two YouTuber you probably know is religiously about Summer Moon Utah Wells. And then the other YouTuber has just recently got married. So, and this, the YouTuber I was watching was the one who's obviously had a falling out with the one YouTuber because she was not saying anything nice about her. Hi. And they're saying how for the last three years, they've literally, Summer Moon Utah Wells has literally paid all their bills. And I was watching a video the other night, right? Ryan Finds Truth. I like him. And he's had a falling out of a YouTuber. Because he got dragged into the drama. And I thought, I'm not getting dragged into this drama. Never. So, and he said the other night, he said he will not use Summer's name in his titles. Unless it is about Summer, he will not use her name in any of his videos, in the titles of his lives or videos. Because he don't want to be seen as making money. Because I must admit, I've seen so many people use Summer's name in their title. And you've gone to watch it and it's not being about summer. To sit there having a go about other YouTubers. I'm going, really? Really? Right? So, and he said he, he won't do that. So unless it's about summer moon Utah Wells, he will not put her name in the title no more. Someone people have asked me to do summer moon Utah Wells. No. Not going there. I know all about that case. I know all the ins and outs, everyone who's involved, everything. Down the rabbit holes, up the rabbit holes, down. You name it. I've been there. And I haven't even done a video on it. But I've been there. And I'm not going to do a video on it. Because there's no new information that's come out for the last, what, two years? No new information. It is heartbreaking. But if I was to do a live on her, like my son said, why don't you do a live on her? I said, because I'm not going to be accused of clickbait. Because as soon as I put that name in my title, I can guarantee you I'd have a lot more people clicking on it and watching my videos. I'm not in it for clickbait. Right? I'm in it before the children, yes. But not for, oh, if I do this, I can get another 
50 subscribers or I can hit my 1,000 or I can hit uh, 10,000, I'm not in it for that. Right? And people go on about how it costs to run a channel. It does cost money. But I'm prepared for that. I was prepared for it before I started it. I knew what I'd have to pay for. I was already paying for the internet anyway, because you always have internet. So I only pay for my streaming app and my YouTube. So that way I don't, when I watch any videos, I don't get any ads in it. I pay extra, so I don't have all the ads. But I will not do one about some of my new time wells, unless some new evidence come out. And then I'll do one. But until some new evidence comes out, I'll keep posting it on my Facebook page and things like that, but I will not do a live. And people, they can't even call me a tragedy pimp on this because I'm not getting paid a penny for this because I, I'm only a new channel. I'm that little pebble at the bottom of a very deep ocean. I'm that little pebble. So small, you can't even see me until you're right on top of me. So, I don't get paid for nothing. And I knew that would happen, is the way it goes. And people watch me for me, and what I say, and what I show, or they don't. If they don't like it, there's the door. I'll show you the door. You know what I mean? But, no. I just, something about this case hit me the first day I heard about him. That was the Tuesday after he went missing. He was reporting missing. I heard about him on Tuesday. And then I did a live about him on the Wednesday. But it wasn't, oh my God, I'm going to jump on this case while it's still in the early days. No, it was just something about what I heard. But, and the fact that it's, it's autistic, I think that hit, hit me a bit as well. So, anyway. So, we've gone over every possibility that could have happened. That three-hour three hour phone call still bugs me. Because when I was married to my husband, who's now sadly no longer with us, I wouldn't have a, I'd be, he'd be lucky if he got a five minute phone call off me. Right? Even luckier if he got a 10 minute phone call off me. And he'd be well over the moon if I even answered the phone. You know what I mean? Because I gave up sending him texts while he was at work. But he, because he never read them, even when he come out of work. I'd send him a text. I knew he finished work at, say, 5 o'clock. I'd send him a text back at 10 to 5. Can you pick some milk up, please, for us on the way home? He'd get in and I'd go, you got the milk? No. Have you checked your messages? He never checked his phone. So I gave up even sending him a text message. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, so for me to have a three-hour phone call with my husband, something serious had to have happened. Really. It would have to be life and death for me to end up having a three-hour phone call. So, and they've been married, what, two years? I think they've gone past the honeymoon stage. So... So that is a big iffy thing with me. Was the door locked? It's been said on here that like it has an automatic lock. So if that was the case, did someone have the key code to it? Could they let them sign and got Sebastian? But there's no footage anywhere. No footage, no home security footage, no doorbell footage, nothing of anything. <laughs> I'm going to speak to my ex when he was in the house. 
I'll tell you a story in a minute. But saying argument, I think it's mine is an argument. Yeah, it could be. The thing is, no looming old um, and we don't know about the clothes that he wore Sunday at daytime. Do law enforcement have them items, or do they not? We don't know, and they're not going to tell us. Right, I remember once, right, it was my 40th, my 40th, so I'm going back a few years now, and I knew when I had my son, I went, when he's 16, I'll be 40, oh, I'll have my life back again sort of thing, right? I can go out and not have to worry about getting a babysitter for my daughter, who's two years younger than him, because he's 16. He can look after his sister. And if he hurts her, she'll kill him. There's no way he's going to hurt my sister, my daughter because she's just going to slap him silly. Right? And I was so looking for my 40th birthday. Right? Well, every year before that, I'd always done something myself for my birthday. Always. I had a few friends round, whatever, went out for drinks or anything. My husband never done anything for my birthday. Never. Well, I thought, I'm so, well, you never know, it's my 40th. He's bound to do something for my 40th. 40th birthday came, 40th birthday went. You know, I didn't speak to my husband for nearly four weeks. Right, and he went to me, I think it was on the fourth week. He said, is this because <coughs> I didn't do anything for your birthday? And I just gave him this look. Right, you know that look us women give our partners? When they say something like, it's going to bug the life out of you, you're going to slap them silly. And I gave him this look. He said, but I didn't think you liked surprises. And I turned around, and this is when I started talking to him again. I said, how do you know I don't like surprises? Have you ever done a surprise birthday for me? Have you? No. Have you ever arranged to take me out for a meal without telling me anything and just go in there? No. Have you ever arranged a party at the home and have all my friends turn up and surprise me? No. So how do you know I don't like surprises? I was... Honest to God, it was nearly four weeks before I spoke to him. Right? He couldn't moan. He's still got all his dinners cooked for him. Still got his washing done for him. You know what I mean? He's lucky I didn't uh, send him to the sofa for the four weeks. <coughs> He'd go to me. He'd see me getting ready to go out like to go to the shops. And he'll say, got a day off. He'll go, I'll take you. And I'll just politely give him the middle finger and walk out the door. I wouldn't talk to him. He got the finger every time he opened his mouth to me. And my kids were going, She's not going to talk to you, Dad. She's not. Yeah, nothing. Got nothing. As I said, he was lucky. I didn't. Succumb him to the sofa for the four weeks. I was just so mad. And my mum's going, and she can't give in. And I'll just look at my mum, and my mum knew then. Oh dear. Oh dear, don't mess with her. She's not having none of this. You know what I mean? No one. I think I could give a certain look. And they go, oh dear, we're not messing, we're not saying nothing to her. She's in one of her moods. Don't say anything to her. She's like this. Stab you. I remember once, um, I was preparing dinner. And my, my brother turned come over. And I've gone and opened the front door and he's come in. And I've gone straight back into the kitchen and I'm chopping away my vegetables. And you know what he said to me? Because it was some bad news he was going to give me. He went, and I mean, yeah, he said, do you want to put that knife down? And I'm chopping away. Why? Why? I'm chopping. Leave me alone. Just, just tell me what it is you want to tell me. Right? 
I've had a long day. I've got two kids at home, under five. So I've had a long day. And you've got Angela put the knife down. And so I've just got the knife and slammed it down. I went, what? And then you told me the bad news. I went, shit. You know what I mean? But, no, I was not one to mess with. I really wasn't. I really wasn't one to mess with. Even my neighbours found that out. And I think my one neighbour was quite, well, two neighbours were quite relieved when I moved up to Scotland. And I'm not lying there. I put on a Facebook post one, a picture of one of my neighbours. And I put a wanted sign over her head because of what she'd been saying to my kids. One. Right? And I was going down for like uh, three or four days going back down to Birmingham. And as I, I went, I went to my son, I said, where's the neighbour? Oh, she's gone away for the weekend. She did. She went to my mum and dad's for the weekend because she knew I was coming down. No, I can't be. Um, you reach that age where you just can't be asked to even argue no more. It's like, you look at me, so, like my friend, she brought me a brilliant t-shirt. Um, it's the one I know, I can't remember the correct wording, it's like, I can't control if my mouth doesn't say it, my eyes will. Something like that. And I went, I looked at it and thought, oh, that's fucking great, I love it. I love it. Right? Because if my, if my mouth doesn't say it, believe me, my face is going to tell you exactly what I think. And I remember once my, my daughter, she was raging about this sofa that she wanted. She'd been waiting for weeks for this sofa to come. They brought the wrong sofa. So she had to wait a bit longer. And I'm down there, I'm down there visiting. When they do to come and pick this sofa up and give her the new sofa. Oh my God, they haven't got the right sofa again. So <laughs> she is raging at these delivery guys. Raging. And your mother in law who lives next door to her, like, she's going to her son, her partner, my daughter's partner. She's going, You need to stop her. I'm going, I'm right. Her partner's just standing there going, No, nope, let her go. Right? And I thought, That's just. Okay, my husband used to be. He wasn't getting involved when I had arguments. No, I'm not getting involved. Right? And she was raging. And I'm going, I'm not getting involved. Go on, girl. Go for it. Right? And then she's backed off a bit. And I've gone up to the drive, this guy in the van. Look, I go home tomorrow. I will not be here on Monday when you come back. So I advise you that on Monday, you have the correct sofa in the back of that van for my daughter because I will not be able, I, I will not be here to stop her. Believe me, she follows after me and if it was me, you, you wouldn't be sitting there now. So if you're lucky you're still sitting in the van. I'd have got you out of the van and dragged you out of the van and got you to get the sofa out of that back of that van. Because there was a v sofa in the van that was the same as the one my daughter had ordered. But, oh, no, this one was for another customer. She said, but they haven't paid for it yet. You pay for it on delivery. So they haven't paid for this yet. I have. I want that sofa out of the van. She was pure raging. And I'm literally saying to the guy, look, you better have this sofa here. Because I will not be here on Monday when you come back. And I will not be able to control her. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to stop her. If she wants to go for your throat, she will go for your throat. But that's just us brummy girls for you. The girls from Birmingham, you don't stand for nothing. Some do. Some are pushovers. And some are just... 
nice, but don't mess with. You can, they can be, we can be really nice. We can be your best friends, but you piss us off. Just once, and you will know about it. Anyway, I think I'm having enough of that. It's true, you do. You don't, you get to an age, and I think I hit that age at. I think it's probably about 40 when I hit that age. Yeah, I'd definitely say it was more 50, right? And because now I've got to that age where, you know what, I can't be asked with all this crap. I don't want that drama. I don't. You want to, you want to say that? Then fine, you just carry on. You believe what you're saying because I don't care no more. I will not get dragged into drama. Unless it comes to my kids or my grandkids, and then God help you. Because you are dragging me into it. And when you bring my kids or my grandkids into it, you're, you're bringing me into it. And I will go for you. I will give time. I willingly go into prison laughing and joking, knowing I've just put you six foot under. You know what I mean? Because I don't care anymore. No but if it comes to my family, you're messing with the wrong person. Anyway, I'm going to say good night. I will be back tomorrow. Right, thank you for listening. I will ask on the Facebook page about this. I'll post it on the Facebook page later when I come off here and I'll see what they say. Right? So, Oh, um, yeah, that's it. Come on. Fucking thing don't work. I swear to God. Mom, um, so thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me babble on. But there's just those few things, as I said, we've gone through every sort of criteria we could think of. If anyone can think of anything else, please let me know. But I think it's going to need one of them to crack. It's going to be Katie or Chris to crack, to talk. Because otherwise this is just going to be another child found. You know what I mean? And you can only... I don't like to say this, but I know it's not good. But you can only flog a dead horse for so long. But I would, if it comes to the point where after about six months, it's still not fine. I'll just do one night a week on Sebastian. Because there are other children you need to, we need to look at. But at the moment, I'll do a nightly one. Because there's so much coming out still. So many twists and turns. So anyway, like I said, come on, let's go back to my comments. Mum coming. Good night, Dippy, and all the others in the chat. GG. Good night. See you all tomorrow, and thank you again for being here.